I'm an arborist, I've been an arborist all my life, but I'm also a woodworker. And if you watched the video that I just put up last week called Rotten Ash, you'll see that we saved all of the ash wood from this job. Some of it in logs, some of it in pieces, but I'm splitting it out. And sometimes I need to make tool handles. So interestingly, I was on a job, yesterday's job, and I found a pick in the backyard. It was a small handheld pick, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. So I asked the guy if he wanted it, and he said, no, you can have it. So it was totally rusted. So I thought, okay, I'm going to bring it home and see if I can fix it up. Because it had a neat design to it, and I, I really like to make tool handles and restore old tools. So come along with me into the shop, and uh, you'll see what uh, kind of fun I'm having out here um, working with the wood. And if, if you need to learn how to make a tool handle for some reason, you know, pay attention. I, I think I've got some good good hints in here and good good tricks on how to do it. And that last job that I just did in that house that was built in 1914, they were doing some digging in the garden. They dug up this old pick. Now it's not big enough to be, you know, a full-size handle pick, but it's got a very unusual, um, I'm not even sure what the word is for this hole that goes in the tools, but, you know, the shape of it is kind of interesting. It's got this little tang that comes down here. And you could never find a handle for this in any store anywhere. So if you want to restore it, that means you have to learn how to make a handle. And the metal in this is, is quite good. You know, we, we struck it with another piece of steel and it made a really high pitched, you know, ding sound. And that high pitched sound tells me that this is probably a pretty good piece of steel. It's rusty, but you know, I can fix that. I'm going to see what I can do with this old pick. You know, it looks like a, a short handle pick, you know, that you'd work in a, in a garden in a, in a tight area. But, uh, I don't know, it just seems like this poor old tool needs to come back to life. So I went out to the wood pile that I just cut down that ash tree and I split out some straight pieces of very, very tight grain. This is the Modesto ash. Still Here's what I've got. I cut it out to shape on the, the band saw as close as I can. I've got a lot of work to do on it, but I'm going to be using the draw knife and the, uh, the spoke shave. And I'm going to work this down and fit that, uh, that handle on there. Now, a draw knife is a pretty cool tool. It was found in almost every old barn across the country, and it was used for many, many purposes, including, you know, fixing the spokes on wheels and making chairs, but tool handles was something that was quite common. Back in the early days, when somebody bought a tool, they'd buy the, just, the, just the head of the tool or the steel of the tool, and they'd make their own handles. So, there's two sides to a, a draw knife. You've got the, the bevel upside, which is very, very aggressive. And I'm not using it in that um, mannerism right now because I want to take small shavings at first. I'm kind of creating the round for this. And you have to be very careful because if you have any run out, you have to turn it around and stop it before it goes all the way. You see, I. I'm taking very, very small shavings at first. Really easy to overdo it with the, the draw knife. It's a, a fairly aggressive tool, but when you get the, the majority of it down and you're ready to, to start going to some of the finer stuff, you can use a spoke shave. This is a, this is a really old spoke shave. You notice it doesn't even have any adjustments. You know, I just kind of tap, tap it on the steel here, and that opens it up. And then I just kind of sight down, I push back down. It's as simple as that. And you can see how effective it is. It's a very efficient tool for rounding quickly. I'm using the, uh, the vise here, but you could easily use a shaving horse as well. 
I have one out back. Sometimes I use it, but today I feel like standing. So, in just a couple minutes time, you know, I've got the, the comfort of the handle made. So, that part of it is pretty much done. I'm going to do a little flare on the end here, but I'll wait till the end. Now, I, I drew out the shape of that pick head on the top right here. So, what I can do now is I can put the, the handle in here, and I'm going to go very, very carefully with the spoke shave and kind of shave down to that point. You can see the shavings get a little bit bigger. I'm looking at the drawing on the edge here, and I'm trying to leave a little bit of the pencil mark because I don't want it to be loose. I want it to be a nice tight fit. So in just a couple minutes here, you can see I've got that down, at least on one side, down to that pencil mark. And flip it over and get the other side. You want that shape to be really, really close. You want it to be a, a, a nice fit. You don't want to have to pound it in there. And, and the pick handles are a little bit different. A lot of pick handles, you fit them in from the end and they widen out. But this particular pick handle is very much like a hammer handle. You've got to put it in and I'm going to put a, a slit down, down the middle of this and I'll ultimately I'll put some wedges in there, kind of like a hammer handle. Sometimes you get little pieces jammed up in there, really easy to take out. Just pop them in, put it back down, nice and close. The tighter you make it, the smaller the shavings. And periodically what you want to do is you want to stop and check. Because if you overdo it, that's a problem. So, I'm pretty close there. I need to go a little bit more on this end up here. I see it's uh, I'm going to fit it close on that side and do a couple of pencil marks up here. Remember not to go all the way to the pencil mark when you're marking it like this on the inside because the thickness of the lead can throw you. So I can see that, and I'm going to put a do not exceed mark right there. I know when I watch YouTube videos, I really enjoy watching somebody do the work. So I'm kind of showing you this in real time. How to get the head fitted close. Once again, now I can see it's getting pretty darn close. It's just a little bit more on this side. And like I said, I want it to slide all the way in because when I put that slot down the middle and wedge it, it's going to expand a little bit. And I want to see nice parallel straight sides here. I'm kind of doing this all by eye. You don't have to be so, so exact. Think of, think of what the old farmers had to do. You know, you think they, uh, Calibrated it out so so tight. I think they just had to eyeball everything. But you know, once you get good with a tool, you can uh, you can really go to town.
and I'm going to kind of go down a little bit straighter on the edges here. So it's not too bad. A little hump in the middle. So I've got it on there. And it's pretty damn close. You know, I think if I tapped it on just a little bit, what it'll do is give me a little bit of an imprint on here so that I can. How's that for a hammer? That's a. That's a Vaughn hammer I found in somebody's yard. They were throwing it away with about, oh, it'll take me about an hour to, to rehandle that and clean it all up. But those are like, those are like $50 hammers now. Those are really, really good quality hammers. So I'm not gonna pound it on really, really hard. But what I'm doing here is kind of leaving an imprint along the edges so that I can see, see just how much more that I've got to take off. Just a little tiny bit. Pretty darn close. And if you want to, You can keep going at it like this. I can see it's a nice clean fit all the way around the inside. But by doing that, you go just a little bit more and I can see where it leaves the marks. It's still a little bit high, a little bit high over here. But don't go too aggressive. Just take it one step at a time. See how that goes now. It's going a little bit further down. You see all the marks over here and the marks over here. So I'm not quite there, but I don't want to do it. So much that all of a sudden it slips all the way down. And I've got the spoke shave set up for a really fine cut. Tighten up that vise now. I've only got it, it's almost there, it's almost to the end. You see, I've only got about uh, less than half of an inch to go here. Let's see if I went too far. Okay, so once again, it's leaving little marks on the wood here where it's a little bit tight. I think I'm probably almost there. And that's about as far as I want to go, but you'll see it's still a little bit canted here. So, okay, so I cut out the end, I cut off the uh, the curve on the bit and I kind of rounded all those little bits that I drew out there and you can see this handle is taking eh, it's kind of a I wouldn't say fancy but it'll definitely be a unique shape so once again I put it back into the vise and 
I think I'm just going to do a little bit of fine tuning on this little area of the handle. You've got to learn to follow the grain because one side will cut really nicely and the other side will rip. So you see I'm kind of going both sides here. It's leaving a little bit ragged, but I'm, I'll clean that up with a sander. So that's sort of a rough little edge there. I think I want to leave that a little bit pronounced in here. Put it over to get the other side. You see it's tearing out coming up, so I'm going to go down on the, the grain over here. And you could read, read the grain where it runs out. So, great tool, but you do have to learn how to, how to read the wood. And if you read the wood consistently, you'll have great success. some of the detail work a little bit later. So now the next step is going to be to fit the handle. And in order to do that, I want to go get a nice rip saw and rip a slot through the middle here. If I use the band saw, I think it's going to be just a little bit too wide. It might make it a little bit gappy. Okay, see I used a thin curved saw and I went all the way down to where the edge of the handle is because I want this to expand when I put a wedge in there. So at this point, I'm going to continue to finish off the handle, but not 100% because at the very end, I'm going to end up pounding this on and that'll probably scratch the handle up. So then I'll do a final finish sanding at the very end. I'm going to take it over. I've got a, a really nice uh, orbital sander over here. And I'm going to use a, a 60 grit. I'm not going to do any more sanding up here to speak of, um, but a lot from here down, and I'm going to form the handle. So I took it out to the disc sander and cleaned it up. A lot of the rust is pitted pretty deep. So I cleaned it up the best I could, but then I thought, you know, I don't want to take off everything because then it'll look like a brand new tool. I want it to have some character to it, but I didn't want it to rust away either. I want you to take notice of the tightness and the straightness of the grain of this wood. I used a fro to follow the grain and Here's what the finished handle looks like. Did do quite a bit of sanding on it, probably 20 minutes worth. And then I gave it a finish of a bit of uh, dark stain, walnut stain. I like it to look old. Then I soaked it in linseed oil, and then I gave it a, a nice dark wax. And you can see I put my maker's mark up on the top there. I do that with a lot of my tools and things I make. Uh, and I'm quite proud of this. So I thought, well, I might as well take it outside.